are AirPods the cigarettes of our generation? Now the same thing could arguably be said about cell phones in general, even most of our modern technology. It's just with these new wireless AirPods that some people are wearing all day, every day, even at night when they're sleeping, the intensity of radiation close to the brain has increased drastically. A not so good analogy is that cell phones are like lead pipes and AirPods are like drinking Flint, Michigan water every day. You know, possibly a small amount of lead leaking into the water versus definitely poisoning yourself, something you shouldn't be doing. Normally, you have your phone in your pocket all day, a few feet away from your head. Maybe you make a few phone calls. Everyone is being affected to some degree, whether they feel it or not, by the radiation around us. Comparing 10, 15 minutes on your phone next to your head every day to having AirPods in for 10 hours is such a huge contrast in overall oxidative stress on the brain that people are going to notice significant side effects, whether it's your memory, overall mental clarity, sleep, out the window. And people that are more sensitive are certainly going to have extreme versions of this, migraines, headaches every day, insomnia, can't sleep at all. Now radiation in general is commonly referred to as EMF, electric and magnetic fields. The type that is emitted from cell phones is called radio frequency technology, which is somewhat easier to avoid than the others. And people rely on it every single day. It's very convenient to have a small device in your hand that can talk to anyone across the world. Plus, the mainstream media will have you believe it's perfectly fine and healthy that the radiation from these devices isn't harmful to the point where they will immediately label you as a conspiracy theorist for even suggesting it could be harmful. Reality is there should be class action lawsuits against the FCC and all of these regulating bodies over this technology for misleading people and not being truthful. But it's such a high level of technology, literally invisible, we can't understand it, we can't see it as average people, that it's a bit beyond our reach to get involved in something like that. You know, spend a day camping in the woods with your phone turned off and let me know how well you sleep. Let me know. That's all the average person needs to start saying, okay, well, this is actually really serious. What can I do to reduce the radiation because the mainstream isn't telling me the truth if I feel so much better away from the technology. Personally, I wear EMF protective clothing all day. We have wifishielding.com, guys. I try to limit my cell phone usage, keep it on airplane mode. I also sleep in a bed canopy Faraday cage, which is super important for your body to recover from the oxidative stress from the radiation all day. You know, instead of AirPods, you should be using wired headphones. Even better, they have air tubes, uh, which we have on, I think we're sold out, but they use less electricity. So there's really options and ways that you can reduce your overall radiation exposure without affecting your lifestyle too much. And hey, worst case scenario, you just sleep in a Faraday cage or bed canopy. Even if your entire day was super high radiation, at least you're able to recover overnight. So we do have one study to look at today. Risk to health and well-being from radio frequency radiation emitted by cell phones and other wireless devices. Radiation exposure has long been a concern for the public, policymakers, and health researchers. Beginning with radar during World War II, human exposure to radio frequency radiation technologies has grown substantially over time. In 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer reviewed the published literature and categorized RFR, radio frequency radiation, as a possible human carcinogen. A broad range of adverse human health effects associated with RFR have been reported since the review. In addition, three large-scale carcinogenic studies in rodents exposed to levels of RFR that mimic lifetime human exposure have shown significantly increased rates of different cancers as well as chromosomal DNA damage. Of particular concern are the effects of RFR exposure on the developing brain in children. Compared with an adult male, a cell phone held against the head of a child exposes deeper brain structures to greater radiation doses per unit volume, and the young thin skull's bone marrow absorbs a roughly tenfold higher local dose. Experimental and observational studies also suggest that men who keep cell phones in their trouser pockets have significantly lower sperm counts and significantly impaired sperm motility and morphology, including mitochondrial DNA damage. 
based on the accumulated evidence, we recommend that IARC reevaluate its 2011 classification of the human carcinogenity of RFR and that WHO, World Health Organization, complete a systematic review of multiple other health effects such as sperm damage in the interim. Current knowledge provides justification for governments, public health authorities, and physicians, allied health professionals to warn the population that having a cell phone next to the body is harmful and to support measures to reduce all exposures to RFR. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, here we are, and the government and people in charge have no problem doing the exact opposite, whether it's setting up 5G towers everywhere or encouraging you to use a baby monitor to fry your child with Wi-Fi all day. Go figure. So, makes it pretty obvious who you shouldn't listen to. Uh, but you guys can go to frank stefanocom where you'll see uh, all my social media, everything else, if you guys would like to support me through my businesses. Uh, we have Wi-Fi shielding where you can get some protective stuff. We even have like little knapsacks for kids uh, that you can give to your toddler while they're sleeping. Um, but that's really it, guys. Uh, these AirPods are probably one of the craziest things to me because anytime I see someone wearing them, like, uh, like how do these people not have a migraine all day? Really, uh, really wonder. But you guys can drop a like on the video. Leave me a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon.